Hey there, beer tubers, and welcome back to Beer Analysis 101 with your host, Maxwell Starr. And tonight, we're going to take a look at Steam Whistle Pilsner from Toronto, Ontario. Oh boy. Anyway, without uh, further ado, let's move on to our lovely panel tonight. We've got the bearded one, Red Beard. How are you doing tonight, sir? Not bad. What be going down, people of the world? Uh, drinking. Yeah, good stuff. We. Oui. Sweet. <laughs> and we got another guy with a green can. We got the on the tenth. Chris uh, Chris Lizak, photography. How are you doing tonight? I'm good, thanks. I'm just really excited that probably uh the beer patrol will be watching, so we have to make a good impression before we get put in their their cruisers and take so them away to prison. Thank you. <laughs> or at least he'll, you know, feel like uh, he's he's still cool enough to hang out with us or or or, or rather we're cool enough for him to whatever. <laughs> Obviously, he's not hanging out with us tonight because we're not cool anymore. Um, moving right along, we got Greg of, um, well, I don't want to make that comment here, but I know what he's, Greg, how are you doing tonight? We never were cool. Never woo, were. woo, woo, here <laughs> comes the beer patrol. Come take us away. I'm doing well, Nick. How are you? Thirsty. How are you? I'm really, ex I'm really excited that we're here on the special edition birthday broadcast for Lee Russell, the King's birthday, where we celebrate with his favorite beer, Steam Whistle. Ooh. He would have been here today, but there's no point. He would have just given it a 10 out of 10, and he's done. He just dropped the mic yeah. and leaves. Well, so that's know, why he's stepped away. And not, Steam Whistle and not Innocent Gun Lager. Well, that's like an 11 out of 10, but that's, you know, <laughs> that's a whole All other right. thing. And last but not least, and the noob on tonight's panel, we've got Ash Sexton. How are you tonight? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for having me. And uh, hey. I'm yeah, I'm I'm the noob tonight. Beer noob. Well, you're not that much of a beer noob. You actually do a lot of home brewing yourself, right? Y yes, uh, a fair amount of home brewing. So I'd like to think I do not have a baby palate, but we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Obviously, this one's going to be an easy one anyway for uh, for as far as palates mm -hmm. go. All right, so let's get down to the history of the beer. So Steam Whistle Pilsner. Yay. Steam Whistle was founded in Toronto, Ontario by three former employees of the Upper Canada Brewing Company following the buyout uh, by Sleeman Breweries in 1998. Greg Taylor, Cam Heaps, and Graham Cromwell came up with the idea of starting their own brewery in a post-employment camping trip, originally planned and then originally planned to name the brewery Three Fired Guys Brewing Co., they decided to instead name the brewery Steam Whistle to evoke the image of steam rushing from a factory whistle, uh, signaling the end of uh, the working day. However, a tongue-in-cheek reference to their termination can still be found etched in the Steam Whistle's green glass bottles and written on the side of the can as 3FG. You can actually see that right there on the side, 3FG. And you guys look at your bottles, you'll probably have it written right on the bottom edge of the bottle. Anyway... Um, the brewery opened in, in the brewery opened and is still located in bays one through 14 of the historic John Street Roundhouse, a former CP rail locomotive repair facility located at the base of the CN Tower um, and next to the Sky Dome. From the beginning, Steam Whistle has only made one beer, Steam Whistle uh, Pilsner. The idea that instead of focusing on the lineup of different beers, do one do one beer exceptionally well. Uh, the only other beer that they have is Steam Whistle Plus, an unfiltered version of, uh, of Steam Whistle, available as draft only at the brewery, actually. Really? Yeah. And uh, if you see right there, there's a picture of Steam Whistle Plus right there. I actually had a chance to try it there last year when I was at the brewery. It's a nice picture, man. Which, embarrassingly enough, I have yet to ever try, even though I live very close to the brewery. You should, you should really totally try it. It's a lot better than regular Steam Whistle. I've heard. Anyway. Mm. Um, available as draft only to improve their beer in 2006 steam whistle brought uh, in master brewer uh, Merrick Macunda formerly on uh, Pilsner as well in, uh, in, uh, in the Czech Republic to uh, help the brewery live up to its exacting standards of a true Pilsner and uh, bring steam whistle up to a level competitive on the world stage since this improvement steam whistle has gone on to win silver at the 2016 Ontario Brewing Awards and gold at the 2012 Canadian Brewing Awards um, Steam Whistle Pilsner is a 5% ABV, 22 IBU, German slash Czech style Pilsner. It's not really descriptive on which uh, country it follows. 
Um, in the spirit of making a true Bohemian or Bavarian style Pilsner, Steam Whistle does conform to Ryan Heikskabat and uses only four ingredients water, malted barley, doesn't tell me which kinds of, bar of barley, a uh, blend of German and Czech hops. They use noble hops, but they didn't say which ones. I'm guessing one's Saz, and of course, yeast. All right. So, if you haven't already, crack them open, and we'll move right to Redbeard. And uh, Redbeard, what's your history on this beer? Um, it was actually, I think, the first drink I ever, the first beer I ever did as a daily drink vlog, and I didn't oh. like it because my palate had no ability right. to handle anything past like Coors Light back then. But I've I'm had sorry. it several, a few times since then. It's you know, I bet there's. Almost always a steam whistle guy at a beer festival. You ever say hi, have one sample of it stuff, and it's it's just it's. I've always find it now that my palate's come along, just kind of a easy drinking, almost macro, but a little bit still kind of crafty, decent pilsner. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Um, moving right along to Chris, what's your history uh, with Steam Whistle? You must have had this before. I've had this. I've had this before a few times, and I'm just looking at my untapped, and I never untapped it. So yay, gonna get myself an untapped. And check get it. your tap on. Yeah, I guess. Um, I I've had it before. I've had it in a, in, in the bottle, and back in the day when it was in the green in that green bottle, of course it was skunky. Didn't like it, but. We'll get to uh, my analysis on this one and give you my own opinion. Hashtag um, when we do this uh, when we do this later. Cool. All right, and uh, Greg, you live in Ontario. You live right in uh, right fifteen minutes, as you said, right from the brewery. You should have uh, should have a history on the spear for sure. What is it? No, don't, I've actually never please. had it before. Thank you, Joe. No, I lied Thank to you. Joe. I called you, Joe. How embarrassing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, patrol. yeah, no, I'm just looking at my uh, untapped. I've untapped this beer 28 times. Holy shit. Uh, but uh, I've probably drank it more like 200, 300 times. Uh, I've been drinking it since 2012, I, ever since probably Chad's review of it, where he kind of gushed all over and said, this is great. Oh, this is good. So I went to the brewery. I tried it. And I'm like, oh, this is really good. My first one. Time I also tried it, it was super fresh because it was basically right off the right off the line on the tour. Uh, so yeah, it's my history. I've drank it an awful lot. Yet for some reason, I've never had the Steam Whistle Plus. Explain that one to me. One slight correction, uh, Nick, to your history. Uh, it's only a slight correction because it's kind of not true. They make, I think, at this point, I'd have to check, but it's I think six or seven different beers. The difference okay. is they only ever sell one of them. The other ones are all. Uh, Festival exclusive. Like I know there's okay. a pale ale they made. Uh, I don't know how many times they made it, but I've had that like, one at a festival. Like when uh, I, so they when do I, it, um, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say when I looked them up on Untapped, I noticed that they did have some more beers underneath their brewery, but they only officially have one beer. Yeah, yeah, they only officially release one. I think the plus is the plus used to be really hard to try. Now I think it's a lot easier to try. I think, like you said, at the brewery, you can try it almost all the time now. Yeah, like uh, when I walked they, into the brewery last summer with uh, with Chad, uh, they were the, you could just get it right there. You can get a free sample, and I didn't pay a cent there, so let's just say put it that way. I'd like to try <laughs> yeah. one. Oh, it was really good though. That's kind of weird. I didn't. Even I had know. more time. I would have stopped for a pint because it was it was that good. Yeah, and then it looks like they got oh well, they got quite a few actually. Wow, they have, have more than I thought they do. It looks like they have about twelve or so different beers. But again, those are all probably. If they're not one-offs, then they're sort of festival exclusive stuff they just bring. Because I guess at the end of the day, I mean, when you're coming to a festival with Steam Whistle, it's not that exciting. So maybe if you make something, hey, this is Steam Whistle yeah. with a twist, then people will give you their tokens. Yeah, and that's exactly it. They should be, uh, if, if you're going to come to a festival, you should bring something special. And with, with well, Steam yeah. Whistle, they got one product. But, I, you know, I, I, I like Steam Whistle and all, but i just thinking, like, if you're going to come to festivals, just bring something nice. Even the plus not, not doesn't to, have to be. I don't want to derail this. I don't want to anyway, derail this yeah, too we're, much. We're already but derailed, but go ahead. At the, at the uh, Roundhouse Beer Festival, which is hosted in the park right outside the Roundhouse where this is brewed, Steam yeah. Whistle always has a booth there. And a couple years I've been there, all they had is Steam Whistle. And I'm just like, well, I'm not going to give you a token for a dollar or two when I can literally just walk into your brewery there and get a free sample for nothing. Like <laughs> that, That's, that's just that's economy true. 101 right there. Pretty yeah. I was like, I'm gonna go over there. 
Your, your brewery is much cooler and it's got a washer. This All is right. true. This is true. Hmm. All right, so we've already covered that Greg's had this beer a lot. Ash, what's your thoughts on this? Like you, you must have had this before. Yes, uh, much like Greg, I've well, I first tapped this one back in 2016. Uh, I've probably had it many years before that. Uh, got that untapped badge to drink six, six of them in one night. Got that badge. Um, but yeah, this is like a, a a regular rotation, constantly being consumed by me type of beer. So. I'm very well versed in this one. I enjoy it. Nice. All right. And uh, moving into my personal history, the first time I ever had Steam Whistle was uh, when Albino Rhino, Chad, had sent me a can. It was around the same time I think he was gushing over it, probably. It was in 2011, late 2011, 2012, that he sent me a can of this stuff. And uh, I've always loved, loved Pilsners. One of my favorite beers of all time is Pilsner Raquel. And uh, the first time I ever had a steam whistle, I absolutely adored it. It was uh, amazing that you could get a Canadian-made Pilsner that tasted almost exactly like a Pilsner Raquel. Since then, I've had it a few more times. Um, uh, the last, uh, I, I remember having it one time, and it wasn't that fresh of a bottle, and it wasn't that cold of a bottle. I didn't think it was that great. Uh, going back to last year when I had it fresh on tap um at uh, the steam whistle brewery it was it was good but i, I didn't think it was maybe it was just because i had this, their plus at the same time i remember like I, I ended up going from i think when i first reviewed steam whistle i gave it a four and a half out of five the uh, the second time i had steam whistle that i can remember like the first time i tapped it was a three out of five and then last year if i had it when i had the brewery probably would have given it like 3.5 but anyway I'm getting way off topic here, but I'm just thinking, like, I always find it depends on what, where I'm at, like, uh, how, what, how my taste, my, my palate is that I just find it. It's kind of either gone downhill since the first time I've had it, or maybe I was just easily impressed back then. Right. Anyway, um, we should really take a look and see who's, uh, who's commenting. Imagine raining on your parades telling us about the spirit. You might as well do the, you might as well read the comments. Nick, you go. All right. It. Oh, I see uh, Lee's in there. Beer Patrol says, I have a good show, fellas. Might be around later for the after show, but I'm not sure. Well, you should make yourself sure. Uh, Lee says, anything over a two for style and personal enjoyment is a solid sign. The whole show has failed on every level. Fuck you, birthday boy. Uh, cheers. Uh, okay, it's just Joe kissing up to Lee for his birthday. Craig's kissing up the leave at his birthday. Uh, Basement Beer says, if anyone says it's better when it's fresh, that person should be banned for life. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, Lee Russell says, thanks, Craig. Jamie's 100% on point. Jamie's always 100% on point. He's the opposite of Greg, according to Joe. And that's why you wanted me to read the comments, isn't it? So, Drunken One says, you luck bastards. Okay, my internet is working again. Yay. Um, uh, beer, <laughs> Greg's like, uh, beer Patrol number one super fan says, Have you guys heard of the Beer Patrol? Crazy new show, Breaking Down Barriers. All right, all right, all right let's move on to the comments here. Right on your parade says, Again, you guys pick a beer I cannot get. Sorry. So, drinking a Peter's brand classic, a uh, Hofbrau beer brewed in Holland for Trader Joe's, six ninety nine dollars six pack at three, of uh, 16 ounce cans. Damn. Geez, that's that's really cheap for that. It sounds um, it sounds kind of interesting. Anyway, all right, so let's go back to um, our ratings. I guess you're ready to write this down, Chris. Yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead. All right, start with Red Beard. What's your uh, what's your thoughts? How you like it? I, lo I love how you're talking right now. We can't hear you. You're muted. You're muted, oh, Red Beard. <laughs> He follows the rules too well. I, I didn't mute myself. I muted him. I oh, just muted you. I didn't realize I was making noise. I apologize. Anyway, um, yeah, this is uh, it's actually really good, really smooth. Um, my favorite pilsner is uh, Stonehouse Brewing. They're in the Stratford kind of area. That pilsner is like so much of that caramel multi flavor. This one has that, but it's just kind of more muted. So it, I still think it's really good. It's just not my favorite. I'd give this at least like an eight and a half for my uh, rating. And then 
Probably again, probably like an eight and a half, eight point seven five somewhere in there for the style. It's it's damn. Make good. up your mind, eight and a half or eight point seven five. Eight point seven five, I guess. Why uh, not? Perfect. My turn, Nick. Do it. Yeah, Chris, go All ahead. Right. Um, this is just meh for me. Uh, basically, this is totally for baby palettes. Um, I say that because I once had a baby palette. Now I've moved. I've moved forward in my life. And, palette. Uh, now I have a juvenile palette, we shall say. Um, for style, I'm giving this one a seven. It's average. It's an average pilsner. I mean, they they do it well, but not exceptionally well. Like oh, like that can blow me away well, and uh, and it's not terrible. So I'll give it an average of a seven. And uh, for my overall rating, I gave it a I gave it a seven as well. It's refreshing and it's not skunky like before. Like before I had a a steam whistle in a bottle and it was totally skunky and I was totally turned off by it. But now, out of the can, this is not bad. My can is dated uh, January thirty first, so it's not the freshest. Like it's gonna matter, um, but uh, yeah. So I give it a seven. So sevens on both style and, and overall for me. Thank you. Excuse me. Very nice. <laughs> Keeping it professional, let's move to Greg. What's your thoughts? Well, this beer, I actually do think freshness matters, personally, in my own opinion. But Copyright infringement. Oh, well, you know, send, send the bill to my lawyer. Uh, this, to me, is basically like the perfect summer beer. It's just like it's right on the cusp of right between – can you guys hear my dog drinking? Because she's really loud. Yeah. Sorry. Keep going. I go into the other room. So this beer is sort of right on the cusp for me of kind of right in the middle of something that's refreshing, easy to drink, but it has enough flavor to keep me a little bit interested, which is kind of why I like this beer. It's the first ever Pilsner I had. So, I mean, that probably shapes sort of my view of what a Pilsner should be because I've yet to have a Pilsner I actually enjoyed more than this one. Uh, so, and again, my, my real only complaint on it, and this doesn't factor into my ratings, but my only real complaint is it's too expensive for what it is. But otherwise, to me, it's basically the perfect beer, and I'm happy to buy many cases of it every summer, enjoy it by the pool. Uh, so my style rating is a 10 out of 10. It's, I've yet to have a better Pilsner than this. Oh, my. Uh, and uh, my personal enjoyment is a 9 with the caveat being that it is better on tap and the fresher you can get it, the better. Uh, there's definitely, you can get cans and bottles that are far, far less than a nine, which Chris Lezak may be experiencing, or that may just not be his thing, but I've had some cans and bottles that were not great either, but this one happens to be quite good. And it's only a little over a month old, so it's not super fresh, but it's fairly fresh. Nice. That's all I have to say about that, in my own opinion. Nice. Honestly, like I said, oh, I did it again. Thing. Greg, you should try to get your hands on either the Stone House or if you've had the Stone Hammer. Both those breweries make really, really nice pilsners that I think... I think you... I've had Stone Hammer oh, before. I don't think I've had Stone House. But I'll check it out. I will take that anyway. under advisement. Cool. Uh, and Ash, what's your, what's your thoughts on it tonight? All right. Yeah. So, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, you know, this is something that I do consume quite a bit of and I do that because I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, what I do really like about it is that it does fill that void. Like I, when I don't want to go out and buy like a macro lager, like I did the other night with the Rolling Rock, unfortunately, I would much rather grab the, the steam whistle. I find it does have a little bit more flavor up front. You're getting some, some crackers, some biscuit, uh, a little bit of drying back on the palate, which is sort of what I want in, a, in what I would call a crusher, right? Uh, something I can just slam back and not getting too much sweetness from it. Um, so in that regards, I think it's nicely balanced. Um, the bittering is just right, again, with those noble hops. Nice, nice little bit of like earthy bitterness, a little bit of floral bitterness to it. Um, not much on the nose. So, you know, to me, the freshness factor doesn't really factor in all that much because I'm not really looking for the nose for flavors or, or aromas or anything like that, right? So, um, so. For the style, uh, I've never had Pilsner or Kel fresh from across the ocean. 
but uh, compared to what I can get here, which what I'm, I would consider to be the standard Pilsner, I'd give this an 8 out of 10. Uh, for personal enjoyment, I've tapped this at 3.5 consistently, um, so 7 out of 10 doesn't blow me away, but I would much rather grab this than, you know, for drinking 3, 4 or more in a night than pretty much anything else. So, um, so yeah. This stuff is definitely sessionable. Wow. You could have a few well, of these. Yeah, well, well said, Ash. That's uh, that's uh, very good, Ed. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> everything I all, wanted to say. Eating all those flavors and shit. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I tend to agree with, with with your assessment. I find it a very easy to drink beer. I find it, uh, uh, when it comes to being true to the Pilsner style, I mean, I've never had Pilsner or Gulf Fresh either, but I find this one actually to be a pretty good clone of something like that. Um, I think maybe it's kind of a bit more, bit more bready or a bit more corny or, or almost going towards, it's almost like it's trying to be an authentic German or, or Czech Pilsner and more like a Czech Pilsner, I would think, because uh, usually German ones are a bit cleaner. Um, but at the same time, I find it very good for the style but it kind of skews more towards <clears throat> being sessionable canadian almost like a craft brewer that's unintentionally becoming macro it's 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 um it's good i mean i like it i'm gonna give it an eight out of ten for the uh for the for for the pilsner style just because i think it does that style pretty well and for personal enjoyment i would have given it a 3.5 out of five i do like it uh as far as freshness goes yeah i mean freshness probably doesn't necessarily matter because uh, my can was brewed on uh, or, or canned on uh, December 20th, 2017. So it's the oldest can probably on the panel right now. And that's Envy Liquor's fault. But to be totally honest, it's still nice and easy to drink. And yeah, it would be make a nice summer crusher. There you have it. So who's calling us baby pellets now? Let's go take a look oh, at the comments. Uh, Nick, I was I was actually busy doing something. Why don't you get that for style one more time? Uh, oh, so I might not have said that. I was going to give it a 7. Okay, overall. What'd you give it overall? Well, I gave it 8, eight, eight, sorry, eight for the style and 7 yeah. overall. Okay, yeah. thank you. I think the oh. only comments we're missing is uh, Marcel's popped into the comments. I Hello, see that. Marcel. Stonehouse is the best there is in Ontario. I've never had Stonehouse. We had Stone Hammer. Stonehouse is uh, very small. Like it, they don't ship it outside the brewery, I don't think. It's a really small hmm. place, but it's really good. Like Usually when I when it comes to a Pilsner, I kind of I expect it to be a bit more beefy and a bit more caramel than your typical uh, your typical lager would be. Yeah, I'm not looking sure. necessarily for clean and easy to drink. But one of those, I'm looking for something that's going to be very like very well, thoroughly uh, enjoyable. Like I'm not sure like, what what style this falls under, but like there's the Czech Pilsner and like the there's one style of Pilsner that I've noticed that caramel flavor's like not there at there's, all. It's the fl the the style whatever this is, it has that caramel flavor. That's my style of Pilsner for sure. You know what? And if I recall correctly, and you know Ash is probably better at pointing this out than I am, but I mean there's as far as I know, there's the German style Pilsner, kind of like a European style Pilsner, and the which is like your Heineken and your Stella Artois. And then you're just your Bohemian or, or Czech style Pilsner, which is like uh, Pilsner Urkel or I think even Czech Park qualifies that, doesn't it? Um, I don't know where they all fall. I always uh, muddle the two up. Uh, but yeah, there's your, your, your Czech and your uh, Bohemian Pilsner. Yeah. One generally imparts more. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit more bitter. Um, yeah, I'm not too the, sure. With that, yeah. In the Euro style, European style, I think is more, it's usually called Euro lager. Like, um, uh, your typical like Heineken or or uh, or Bex or something like more basic. Ah, fuck, I got some my eye. Unprofessional right. language, Nick. Oh yeah. Um, looking Marcel, back at the comments, Steam is the OG craft Ontario. Good gateway beer. Blah blah blah. Stonehammer is quite close. Uh, Marcel says I should. Uh, after more than 10 years, be able to try a new brew, take a small risk, but they're making money. So what do they know? Yeah, they are making a lot of money. I mean, especially, I think a lot of it's to do with their location right under the CN Tower. Not sure. Like you can... Sorry, I was going to say, I'm not sure Marcel was here. We were talking about, like, Steam Whistle apparently does make a fair number of other beers, but they only give them to the people at festivals for some stupid, weird reason. The yeah, because each, each one of their that... special ones. I was going to say, each one of their special ones has a limited number of check-ins and untapped. I'd like to try one yeah. of those. The, see, see the like other thing is, with something else. you know, this beer's been around for a while, and it's actually maintained, as far as I've been drinking it, I've been drinking it since anywhere near the beginning, but as far as I've been drinking it, 
it's always stayed stayed quite consistent as opposed to other sort of comp- people like Mill Street and stuff that have really gone down and hill downhill IP. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like stuff like that that like has been really macroized. Now Steam Whistle is still craft. But they only make one beer, but at least it's you know it's consistent. You always know what you're getting. Whereas it's kind of annoying where there's a company that like oh. I apologize. I apologize. Okay, for keep that. going. Keep going. <laughs> that was awesome. This this is terribly unprofessional. I apologize. Yeah. But no, but you so, know, you, other other times you buy a beer, it's like, oh, I used to love this, you know, Mill Street Tank House or this uh, Creamore Keller beer. Not so good anymore. I so, I don't think it's as good as the first time I had it, but I, you know, I only had it once way back then, and I had a, might have had a more of a baby palate back then, so I was really easily impressed. Well, this, sex is ne- never as good as the first time you had it either. Oh God, the first time you have it is awkward. Yeah, yeah I got good. scores. I got. All scores. right, so what what's your scores, here, Chris? Since we're going off off topic here, actually, before I even give the scores, I wanted to say a couple things about this beer as well that I, I did mention before, and somebody else just did mention it earlier. It is totally sessionable. Like I pounded that that down. Like I could have just drank that in like three seconds. Yeah, I'm on number two already. Yeah, I have a second one in my fridge behind me. Um, And what Marcel was saying in the comments about it being a gateway beer, totally, I totally agree with him 100%. If you're you're starting off and you're all you're drinking is macros like I did back in the day, and I still have them in my fridge. I still got my cores right back there, but this is a very good gateway beer to get into the craft world uh, to start off. And if you go to festivals that has steam whistle and they're bringing their other beers that they're that they're, you know, bringing to the festivals stuff like that. Try them out. You probably won't be disappointed. Um, another thing I wanted to say is, you know what? I wanted to thank Ashley Sexton for coming on the show today. You were very professional. Yeah, and, I, and you know what? I'm yeah. really happy. Most professional one here. here. Uh, and with that being said, we should substitute Ashley for Greg every week. And Greg is not welcome back anymore. But why do you need to substitute? Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, a, I'm good with this. Well, you know, this. Greg um, just needs to maybe make sure his, his dog is like fed, watered. I'm just, I'm just joking, Greg. I love you anyway. You're not, you're still not coming. You, you can have us both. It can be a, a Greg Sexton sandwich. All right, let's do the scores now. Okay, so for uh, for style, uh, the average score given was uh, an eight point three five. I think I think Greg just overly hyped this one at ten. So he it's pretty good, man. Yeah, not bad. It actually, it's decent. Um, it really would have given it eleven if I could. Our overall. Is seven point seven. So not bad. Whatever. And my elevator disagrees, but too bad. You know, you guys can hear it there. But anyway, yeah. So eight point three five for style, and overall we gave it a seven point seven. So there's. So wait, my... do we like MGD more than this? Um, I don't think so. I think MGD has lost out the steam whistle. Yeah. Yeah, that's it for com. Uh, that's it for uh. For that. That's pretty cool. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, Happy I was going to say reason, one of the reasons. Yeah, right. One of the reasons why I'm showing some of these pictures. These are from my trip to uh, the Albino Rhino Beer Fest last year. And on my way back to the airport, we stopped off at the uh, in Toronto for to go to Bellwoods, and we went to, went to the um, uh, the uh, the Steam Whistle Brewery. And I got to say, if you ever get a chance to go up there, even if you don't like your beer or even drink beer, this is it's a great spot to go. Beautiful building inside. They they're built into this historic uh, train roundhouse. It's really very unique. It is. It is really cool. We we're actually looking at getting married there. It looks like they spent some, a, spent some money. Quite on a pain. Yeah. See, like there's, yeah, there's they've been a while, so they've got like they've. It is really nice. When it first opened, it probably was. It's a hobo. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Now, now, Nick, was that Chad in that picture you just you were just showing a second ago? Did you see the size oh, yeah. of him? Chad before he I lost the weight. There. I was okay. gonna say, holy yeah. shit, he lost a lot of weight. What yeah, he's lost. Oh, no, no, that guy. Yeah, he's lost a lot of weight too. Oh, <laughs> so in the comments, we have uh, Andrew Watts saying one of my favorites. Uh, he's been at the brewery. He's had an amazing time. And raining on your parade with the final question of the evening, and we all know what it is. What is the beer for next week? Drum roll. I don't know if anybody's got a bottle of it. I didn't get one tonight, but we're gonna do his favorite beer to shit on. Molson Canadian. No! Uh, we're going to do Molson no! Canadian. No! Oh, right. We're going to make Greg Mel. Let's do it. <laughs> we're doing Molson Canadian next week. I am available. Do I'm Canadian. very much down for that. All right, so next week, uh, the part of Greg will be played by Ashley Sexton. <laughs> yeah. See you in two weeks, guys. Um, here's the challenge for that. Have it at cellar temperature. Oh, oh God. 
No. Nope. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, the liquor stores here still sell it in the Olympic, uh, <laughs> the Olympic foil bottles, the campaign bottles. I was thinking oh, of doing that's that. That's going to have to be. Oh, shit. I'm going to go and get one of those. You're going to go out and get one of the champagne bottles now, Dave. It's all I'm, on I'm you. such an awful human being, but I will. Maybe I'll sonicate it next week. There Do it. Go. Do oh, it. Yeah. You're loud. I'm forbidding it. <laughs> anyway, any final right. thoughts or anything like that? Anyone want to talk about anything you before we go off? I'm, I'm good to go. No, like, I, I just good. one technical thing to add because sure. you guys were asking about the difference between the Czech and the Bohemian pills. Oh, yeah. uh, the German pills are the really light, light straw colored ones, and the uh, the Bohemian ones have a little bit more of that caramel, like caramel looking flavor. So yeah. that's if you're looking at two, one's darker than the other. It's probably a, a Bohemian. There yeah, when I when I usually think of the two, I think of like Warsteiner, so easy and cl like so crisp and drying to drink. But when you think about like uh, Pilsner Kell, is actually one that's almost like you want to sit and enjoy rather than just jug. And this kind of, I feel like the, this almost skews more towards the Czech style, but it's still very good. It's like it's, um, it's, it's still insanely crushable too. Yeah, Caramel multi flavor is one of my like all time favorite things to find in a beer, and like it's there. Again, the uh, Stone Hammer and Stone House have it a bit more, so that's why. But that that flavor that's in there, it's it's nice. It really is a nice pilsner. I'm actually impressed. I haven't had it in a little while. Nice. All right. So, any final thoughts? Anybody? Greg? No, I think I'm pretty good on final thoughts. All right. Are you still in kind of denial that we're doing uh, Canadian next week? <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I'll just get over it by just drinking the other 11 of these that I have sitting in my fridge. I just want to say real, real and quick. And that double Tempest that's sitting uh, in there. So let's say real quick, this is in the bottle. This is about a month older than this can. Noticeable difference. Could it be the bottle? Could it be the can? Could it be the date? I don't know. It could be a lot of things. It could just be my own imagination. Could it be all the skunks in that bottle? Could it be a little light struck? It doesn't yeah. taste skunky to me. It just there's less There's less flavor to it. There's just... Less but of you, whatever it is. In, in a bottle, beer. even like a, any light that gets in there is going to degrade the beer. Yeah, a little bit much, but a little bit more faster than in a can. So yeah, it could be. But that's mm. why also why they, they package uh, they package those in a box though. Okay. They do package them in a box. So I, I again, I don't know. I don't. I like I said, yeah. it could be my own imagination because I know that the date's different. I automatically think it's different. Yeah. But I'm just having them side by side. I'm like, yeah, this can was quite a bit better this one was a we nine know. the, the bottle know. would not be a nine if i were to rate it i don't, I don't know, know what you do with your imagination i don't know what's more annoying my elevator or greg and his dog squeaking that toy right now right well there. well chris it's, it's we will duel and as find as, out as far as things that have been going on for a while your elevator definitely wins right now greg's dogs definitely win it's yeah. apples to all right i think i think we're done here we're going to be popping we're back done. on with the live chat mm. we'll uh we'll talk to you guys soon I'm taking my dog's squeak toys away. Goodbye. Yeah. Right. Cheers. You can have the squeak toys for the after show. There you go. Right. Oh, boy. She's excited. That'll be the after show. Look at me. Greg. Greg.